Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Nicholas Richardson and this is the news. The United Kingdom said goodbye to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II today. A state funeral was held at Westminster Abbey. At 8.30pm Polish time, the coffin with the body of Elizabeth II was placed in the grave in the George VI Memorial Chapel at Windsor Castle. Elizabeth II died on the 8th of September at the age of 96. She was the longest reigning monarch in British history. The funeral of Queen Elizabeth II was attended by British Prime Minister Liz Truss and opposition leader Keir Starmer. All living former Prime Ministers, authorities of the House of Commons and the House of Lords, representatives of the authorities of Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, representatives of 145 countries, including 19 monarchs, 48 presidents and 22 Prime Ministers. Poland was represented by President Andrzej Duda and his wife, Agata Kornhauser Duda. The moment. This moment when we bid farewell to the late Queen Elizabeth II of Great Britain is indeed the moment when an era ends, not only in British history, but also in European and world history. The President of the United States, Joe Biden, also came to London. It's a loss that leaves a giant hole. And uh, sometimes you think you'll never, you'll never overcome it. But uh, as I've told the King, She's going to be with him every step of the way, every minute, every moment. And that's a reassuring notion. Today is a public holiday in the United Kingdom. The British were saying goodbye to the Queen. The coffin containing the body of Elizabeth II lay in state at Westminster Hall from September the 14th through to this morning. In order to pay tribute to the Queen, people waited in queues of several kilometres and for up to 24 hours. We, um, my husband and I, um, we were actually on holiday um, and we flew back yesterday afternoon. Um, and we've come straight here. We've we wanted to be here because this is, it's, it's a very final moment, I think, and it's, it's, it's our last chance to say goodbye, and we, we've decided that there's no, never going to be another, anybody quite like Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Um, we, I just feel like she's one of the main, main um, female people that we can look up to. We don't have a lot of female role models, which I thought was really important for my daughter to come. The coffin with the body of Queen Elizabeth II was transported to Westminster Abbey, where the funeral service began at 11 o'clock local time, with the Dean of Westminster, David Hoyle, officiating. The funeral ended with the national anthem of the United Kingdom. Then the cortege passed through the streets of London. At around 2.30pm, the coffin was placed in the state hearse, from where it was driven to Windsor Castle. At 5pm, there was a service of interment in St George's Chapel, with the final blessing given by the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby. In his address, the Archbishop pointed out that Queen Elizabeth II was a rare example of a leader who preferred to serve the people rather than to be served. Her late Majesty famously declared on a 21st birthday broadcast that her whole life would be dedicated to serving the nation and commonwealth. Rarely has such a promise been so well kept. Elizabeth II devoted her entire life to serving her country, but she valued the time spent with her loved ones. Her real passion was racing. <laughs> She had to stand next door, she could go every day, see her foals, work out, you know, the next meetings for the... Before taking the throne on her 21st birthday, Elizabeth II made a promise that she would devote her life to the service of Great Britain and the Commonwealth of Nations. I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and to the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong. Elizabeth II's 70-year reign is also a huge era. Of course, an era within which we can say from the British Empire over which the sun never set until Brexit. Today, Britain hosts the world, and by that we are happy and proud. The proceedings will end with a private ceremony. At 8.30pm, the Queen's body will be buried in the King George VI Memorial Chapel at Windsor Castle, where her late husband, Prince Philip, is also buried. Elizabeth II reigned on the British throne from 1952. She died on Thursday, September the 8th, at the age of 96.
Day 208 of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Exhumations of the victims of the Russian occupation in Izium are underway, and traces of torture are visible on some of the bodies. According to British intelligence, the Russians are losing more fighter jets. President Zelensky said that Ukraine did not intend to stop fighting to regain its land. Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia and Poland have closed entry for Russians with Schengen visas. Further cases of Russian war crimes are constantly being documented in the liberated territories of the Kharkiv Oblast. Last week, 10 Russian torture rooms were located, where both women and men were interrogated. Until recently, one of them was operating in Kozachka Wapan. Here on the right is the torture cellar where the locals were interrogated. They were kept in here without food and without medical care. Since the beginning of September, the Ukrainian army has liberated over 9,000 square kilometres from Russian occupation. The spectre of Russian terror triggered a wave of emigration from eastern Ukraine, but the advancing counteroffensive by Ukrainian forces is a chance for civilians to return to their homes. I am overwhelmed by it all. We weren't home for five months. I wanted to see what happened to our house. It's terrifying. I'm still afraid to be here. I have the impression that something might explode at any moment. According to British intelligence, Russian forces have been intensifying missile attacks on civilian infrastructure for several days. Massive shooting has turned the streets of Bakhmut into a scene from a horror film. Before the war, the city was inhabited by over 70,000 people. Now those who remain are afraid to leave their homes. Russian artillery is also shelling industrial infrastructure. A nuclear power plant was the target of a Russian attack in Mykolaiv last night. Tonight, a missile fell in the Mykolaiv Oblast, 300 metres from the Pevdeno nuclear power plant. There was a short-term power cut. On its premises, windows and buildings were damaged. The invaders wanted to shoot again, but forgot what a nuclear power plant is. Russia threatens the entire world. We have to stop them before it's too late. According to the American Institute for War Studies, Russian forces have been struggling with the shortage of personnel for months and therefore are increasingly recruiting inexperienced volunteers or prisoners. They can count on a salary of over $2,500, which is three times the national average. Recruits must complete three exercises, speed, strength and endurance. After passing this exam, we will prepare documents on calling for military service. Later, the conscript comes to the military unit, is assigned to a specific division and starts his military service from that moment. The authorities in Kiev say that the Ukrainian counteroffensive will continue and that the temporary lack of progress is intentional and results from logistics. About 200 Russian soldiers died in the explosion at the former bus station. Now the building is a Russian garrison. We continue to fire at ammunition warehouses, thus preventing further Russian attacks. From now on, Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia are closing their borders to Russian citizens who have Schengen visas. The authorities justify their decision by fear for national security in connection with the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Uh, we have been trying to convince Finland to come with us uh, uh, together because they will be the sole entry point and they will be under a lot of pressure. Uh, there. Um, I don't understand why they don't do it, because in the words, uh, I mean, the leaders of, uh, of Finland have been very vocal about this. Almost all countries bordering Russia have stopped issuing tourist visas for Russians. Finland is currently undecided. Therefore, the Finnish authorities expect a greater influx of Russians in the near future. Currently, up to 5,000 Russians arrive each day. Today, Polish Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki participated in the second Conservative Summit in Bratislava. The event was attended by representatives of European Conservative circles from the world of politics, culture and religion. The main topic of the meeting were the most important challenges for contemporary Europe. Russia's aggression against Ukraine has created a whole new situation. It has become a great generator of crises, security crises, economic crisis, energy crisis, but just as it has become this crisis generator, at the same time there is hope in me that it can also become a catalyst for change. A catalyst for change that can result in something that we have long awaited, namely getting rid of the Russian aggressor, in this broader sense of the word. Today's Russia, today's power, Putin's power has distilled, one might say, from 20th century history, all the worst, nationalism, imperialism, totalitarianism, and an attempt to dominate other countries. In a sense, also colonialism, because by conquering other countries, Russia wants to colonize those countries, to suck the vital, life-giving juices out of other countries. Russia wants to colonize those countries, to suck the vital juices out of other countries.
żywotne soki z innych krajów. That's the news. Thank you for watching. Stay with us to the weather, Poland Daily Business and more programs. But from it, have a good night and a better tomorrow.